Hi, I'm Claire Prosser. Uh, I'm an artist and welcome to my uh, small studio. Um, it's in my back garden. Um, I also do a bit of teaching as well. So I teach on a foundation course uh, in Nantgaru in Kalaga Um And I'd like you to, um, I'd like to introduce to you today an aspect of my practice and maybe how I might start some uh, drawings and paintings. So I come from a background where I used to do kind of quite a lot of kind of film work and performance and I've always been really really interested in our relationship to space and objects um, and I've uh, been doing lots and lots of kind of more lots more drawing and collage and painting more recently which looks at this relationship so so I'm uh, I wanted to introduce you to some drawing activities which will um, which maybe it will make, might make you more excited about the spaces that you're spending so much time in at the moment. Um, we are spending a lot of time kind of in our own house environment. Maybe you've got a garden or maybe you're kind of spending a lot of time in your bedroom or, or something. And I, and I thought it'd be quite nice to introduce you to some techniques which might invigorate your drawing or your painting practice like it's done mine. So there are a few things which I'm going to show you, um, looking at negative space, using a viewfinder, doing some interesting kind of activities that I call kind of pick and plonk. I read it in a book somewhere and I really, really love playing around with that activity. You might see some artworks behind me um, and these are some kind of things that I'm working on at the moment. Um, I really love shape and colour and kind of like uh, go out in my environment and try to seek seek those kind of like shapes um, that I, and I pick them up. Uh, I don't pick them up physically but I pick them up and I either put them in my brain or I, I always take a little sketchbook with me or I take a photograph and I bring some shapes back and they're always kind of um, so you work, my work always references the environment. What I love about these exercises is the fact that we are, as artists, um, creative and we should see our world in, in different ways if we can. And uh, I'm not asking you to draw um, things exactly here. I'm asking you to kind of pick apart, pull apart things that we see and um, become perhaps a little bit more um, more loose perhaps um, so have a looser approach in the way you see the way you draw and the way you create afterwards okay so i'm going to show you the first activity in this drawing circuit where we're abstracting kind of the environment around us so um what you're going to need for uh this we're making a viewfinder um what you're going to need for this is a small piece of paper. This is kind of a postcard size, it's A6 size. You'll need a pair of scissors, okay. Uh, you will need a piece of paper um, and you will need to have kind of drawn some uh, window frames. So I've, I had this sort of um, rectangular template cut off card that I could draw around. You could measure it or you kind of eyeball it. Um, it's just um, what I ask you to do is uh, five different studies, drawn studies. Okay. And I used a fine liner drawing pen. Um, you could use pencil, you can use colour as well. So if you feel like you want to inject some colour into these kind of small sketches, then absolutely do it. Um, they're intended to be kind of like quick five minutes maximum kind of sketches each. Um, but yes, definitely it includes some colour. Okay. What you'll need to do to make the viewfinder is fold this in half. So I'm folding this in half and then what you're going to do is um, to begin with it I always make sure that you cut the viewfinder fairly small you can always cut larger you can't you can't always stick bits on that easily at all so I always start with a nice small window okay um, and then we'll make it a bit bigger if we think we need it okay And then you cut it like that. So I made two marks here, cut lines, and I'm going to cut across to join those up. 
we're basically making a, a square window inside a rectangle, a rectangular window inside a rectangle. Or it could be square, it could be circle, you could make any shaped kind of compositions that you like. Just make sure that you draw the same kind of composition on your sheet of paper um, or sketch pad or whatever you're using. Okay, so this is your viewfinder. This is my viewfinder. It's pretty squiffy, so I might um, I might kind of just tidy that up a little bit when you when off camera. Um, but uh, yeah, so when you're when you're making a viewfinder, just check through it, see if you quite like kind of um, how it's working for you. So kind of have it close to your eye and then further away, and you can already see if I hold it up against things here in my studio, you can already see that it's. Um, it's starting to fragment um, the environment, so it's starting to like zoom in. We're almost like using it like a camera, okay? You could use your camera for this, you don't need this piece of paper. What I find helpful is this border, and it might help you if, it, if this piece of paper is a bit larger in fact. So if it's a bit larger like this, you had a small viewfinder in there. It helps block off the noise, and when I mean noise, like stuff around your window frame. So. With a camera you see lots of different things going on at the same time whereas this helps to block out and really focus in on that thing in the middle in the center of your window so once you've got this frame cut up you're ready to go uh, into your house garden um, your environment go through your room look upside down look right above really kind of take a 360 view of your environment okay i'd like you to see things in a different light go equipped with your drawing materials uh, along with your piece of paper as you can see i've drawn as i said earlier i've drawn um, these uh, composition frames already already on my paper okay now this makes it much more helpful um, and as I said, you could sort of, these are meant to be really quick exercises, but if you wanted, if you really, really like this, and I'd really sit down with it, use watercolours, paints, pastels, colouring pencils, felt tip pens, whichever you feel, if you want to start injecting colour into those kind of early sketches. This is initially just kind of line drawing, and as I said, I used it like a fine line pen, and these are my drawings, okay? So I went around, I... Um, used my viewfinder and I sat and drew these images. Now they're quite simplistic, okay, and by that I mean there's no detail, I'm not looking at tone, I'm not looking at form, I'm merely looking at kind of line and shape uh, because this is kind of how I, how I then bring it back to the studio to play around with, okay. Um, but you could kind of go for it in terms of, yeah, adding colour, adding tone, form, um, uh, and just seeing where it takes you, okay? So this is up to you. It can be a really quick exercise, um, and it could be an exercise you want to sit with a bit longer, okay? So just go for it. Uh, as I said, go around all 360s so and look underneath things stuff you don't look at before uh, go inside your bin what do your bin look like through look like through a viewfinder um, yeah go and explore and hopefully you'll see your home environment in 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 a different light okay enjoy so what I'd like to do now is show you a little bit about uh, how I might use this viewfinder in the house so um, uh, this viewfinder is really, really good for kind of cutting out and fragmenting our space around us. So I'd like you to try and do just that. So say if you're looking at a few objects, maybe a lamp, for instance, you might not kind of think, OK, well, I'm going to get all of that in. What you might want to do is kind of focus in on a section. OK, so I'm going to show you a few different examples through photographs, how I might do this. Let's have a little look at this uh, ceiling light through our viewfinder. So. Instead of trying to think about getting all of that object in, I'm going to hold up the viewfinder and see where I might be happy with. So I really like how we are able to fragment that whole object into this window. So we get a really interesting sort of series of lines and 
and kind of shapes in that window. We could move this around and just see where we want it to lie. I think that adds a lot more interest into the, in the drawing, into the painting that we might end up creating. We're kind of looking at things in a different way. We're taking them out of context. So we're no longer kind of looking at the ceiling like here. We could be looking at anything. It looks like architecture as well. So have a little go of fragmenting your spaces around you. So I just wanted to show you what um, what I what I might do if I was kind of doing some watercolor sketches. So these again are quick studies, taken around my watercolor palette, and using my brush as a pencil, and being fairly fairly loose, fairly quick, um, kind of just capturing the essential parts of the composition that I view through my viewfinder. So you can do this too, or you could do it with any other medium if you want to use colourful medium. So I just want to explain what I've just um, done in that time lapse. So uh, to slow down a little bit. Um, when I look back at something like this, these kind of watercolor sketches or these drawings, um, I think about the shape or the lines that are kind of within them, um, and kind of like a magpie, I. I look at things that I'm quite interested in. I tend to be interested in kind of repetition, um, kind of lines overlapping. Um, it might be the colour of that object that's kind of really kind of inspired me. Um, for example, I really like this shape here and these kind of like meeting and just touching one another. I think that's quite an intimate, quite an interesting kind of um, composition but it's very very simple I understand that um, so when I bring any of these sketches back to my studio I'm thinking well uh, I look first of all um, and I write down maybe words or maybe I just think about words or I start imagining kind of joining some of these things together and I it's very impulsive, so I work quite spontaneously in the sense that I work with what I'm drawn to and don't initially try to overcomplicate with, um, uh, with, with inherent meaning or anything like that. So I don't try and like make it complicated with, in terms of concept. Um, I think the, the ideas are are inherent kind of within the work itself that I'm interested in kind of shape object and an arrangement of, of space and flattening flattening of space in my work 
So for the collage that I am going to talk you through, just really kind of how I got there essentially, because it can be quite interesting to sort of see how how one might get to somewhere. And it is very simple and quite hard to explain. And this isn't always how I work. Uh, I work in lots of different ways and this can be a really good kind of kickstarter into perhaps um, a painting composition, maybe for a larger piece of work or um, perhaps something that could translate uh, into textiles. So I just worked with paper and what I did was paint kind of the papers, taking these two lines, shapes, spaces, compositions as inspiration. Um, really drawn to the repetition in both of them, but also the kind of, um, the, they're almost vertical, I know they're not completely vertical, but almost vertical lines with a softer line. I like that kind of juxtaposition, that contrast. Um, so just, I just wanted to give you a, a, a basic kind of lowdown onto how, into how I might process something as simple as those um, and take them a little bit further. So I painted some papers, I then cut them up almost to sort of mimic. Again, nothing is exact. Um, I'm very uh, quick and I'm kind of responding to both the making of a piece of work. So I, I really love cutting things up. I love painting and mark making. Um, all of that is really kind of important to me. Um, and, and again, I'm not kind of thinking about tone or creating sort of like three dimensionality here. Uh, I'm essentially taking the colour, the shapes and taking them into the collage. So I painted up yellow, yellow pieces of paper. I engraved, like didn't engrave. Um, I painted in that kind of grey kind of strip line and then took these kind of curves um, the greyish kind of tones of the curves, painted up another piece of piece of paper, waited for that to dry, and then started cutting them up, chopping them up and arranging them. Uh, what I quite like about these collages that I make, I'm currently interested in, is both the flat here, but then also kind of like this ability that they're, they're popping up. So, uh, that's again just my interest and just a way that you could sort of th start thinking about developing some of those sketches that you've been been kind of collecting from your home environment. So we've gone from going around with a viewfinder, collecting lines and shapes and colours, bringing them back. I've married two ideas or sketches and this is just one way of of me interpreting how I've um, how I see you know how I see shape and colour and line um, so I invite you to maybe um, take two of your compositions and take something from them it could be one shape two shapes it could be um, the colour, anything. Um, you feel quite open and free to do whatever you wish to do. Again, it's quite it's quite spontaneous, and because it's so spontaneous, I do find it fairly difficult sometimes to explain my process. Um, but I think just kind of trust where your where your heart is kind of taking you. So that's just one little outcome. What I might do with this then is sort of think, well, actually, I really, really like that. I like that it's quite three dimensional. I might take that into, say, textile or canvas um, and almost kind of cut into the canvas surface and lift that off and really play around with the painting surface. So it really takes it away from being the original sort of water hose pipe and it becomes something so different and that's what I love about working in this way how how removed from reality um, 
things can be so making seemingly familiar things unfamiliar and weird I really like that about about making artwork so yeah just to explain what I've done Hello, so I just wanted to explain what I've been doing with the collages that I created from working with the viewfinder uh, paintings. So I went through drawing, I went through uh, creating a watercolour sketch through by looking through a viewfinder and took those drawings into kind of creating this sort of shaped collage. And then I thought I'd wanted to kind of show you um, how I might develop that next into sort of more of a shaped painting using canvas. So um, I painted on a piece of canvas, or it was calico actually, and so I painted some um, one square with yellow and another with black. So painted them fully, let them dry, and then I've just worked on them on top. Um, so what I've done here uh, in that little time lapse, um, I've so far just pinned this but I'm going to go and stitch it now. Um, so again this is kind of like how I'd work in the studio, playing around with um, shapes, the colours I brought back and I quite like making irregular shaped kind of paintings. So this is the pleated so this is the, sorry, the yellow canvas, yellow calico. Um, I've pleated that uh, to kind of create that kind of line that the initial hose pipe made. And then with the cut black shapes, I've sort of inserted those, so I'll stitch those in as well. Um, but I'm gonna stitch that and uh, then see how, see how I feel. So again, just a way in which I go from a drawing into an irregular shaped painting. <laughs> 